David, good to see you. Can't, I can't find a lot of enthusiasm out there for this potential tie-up. Maybe you have some. I think there's still a lot of confusion out there. Uh, these are two business models that would be um, somewhat complementary, but definitely synergistic. Uh, I, I, I think a combination could be possible. I don't expect that there would be antitrust issues, like some other possible combinations might be where you would have two sets of broadcasting assets. Uh, so I, I think that uh, right now it's uh, there's a little bit of skepticism in terms of uh, why are they getting together? Are they rushing? Are they fearing uh, what the future means? I, I don't think that they, they they need to be going at it uh, in a uh, in a willy nilly fashion. I think right. that they have a lot of assets that are uh, that are fixable and buildable from here. Would the conversation be different and more enticing to everybody if they didn't have such high debt loads? And maybe that counterfactual doesn't matter. But how significant is the balance sheet headwind? Well, I think that uh, you do have two different stories here. Warner, Warner Brothers Discovery is generating a lot of free cash flow on its own, uh, about $5 billion this year, about $4 billion next year because of coming out of the actors and writers strike, they're getting back to content production, whereas Paramount, having a smaller uh, smaller portfolio, they are a little bit better than break even, uh, and that means that they have less flexibility in what they can do to improving their balance sheet. Uh, so I think that that free cash flow generation, potential synergies from a deal, uh, as well as uh, growth in some other areas, uh, such as you know the studios business, uh, could and the improvements on profitability at streaming are all ways that they could help uh, improve the balance sheet from here. But they, they can do it on their own, but there, there could be synergies from a deal that could be incremental to that. Well, you know, David, it's Tom. What's interesting about the, the two stories for Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount, at least in 2023, has been the divergence. We've seen some real relative strength in terms of Warner Brothers Discovery versus what's happening with Paramount. Does Paramount need to find a partner in order to survive going forward? Uh, it seems like uh, they would need to have some more uh, scale uh, with, with their businesses. They are very significant in uh, the linear network advertising that they've been tra transitioning to digital. So I think that's a misunderstood part of the Paramount story. Um, you know, so I think, yeah, and they've got you know, pretty good uh, breadth there. It, it's still an area where there's uh, there are some cord cutting issues, um, but the Paramount Plus uh, you know, streaming service may, you know, maybe could be argued as as subscale and possibly uh, the volume of uh, production out of Paramount Studios. While it's got a great history, great library, and a number of great uh, pieces of uh, of its own IP, uh, that's also producing uh, you, know, you know lower than some of the other peers, such as. Uh, Universal or Disney or uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. So I think in this era, uh, the scale uh, is going to matter more than others, uh, but it, it it might not require complete company merges. Uh, there, you know, there could be some uh, platform combinations such as on the streaming services that, they, that, that could be a, a way to solve some of the issues. Right, or everyone's kind of joked, you know, they should just all be sellers to Netflix. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's definitely a whole other topic. I, I would say that uh, you, you had uh, the studios selling their content to Netflix in its earlier days. Then all of the studios and media conglomerates went back to the the walled garden environment. Uh, so they, I think that does you know, beg the question: uh, Is is Netflix going to continue to be able to uh, source strong content? But that means that the uh, some of the more legacy studios, the legacy media conglomerates, uh, do need to retain their talent and keep producing the quality content that they've made for for decades uh, in order to still have. Uh, you know, some competitive product out there. Both of these stocks, maybe we can show them again, are in, if I recall, kind of the low teens. What would it take for Warner Brothers Discovery for that to, to get its stock to triple from here? I, I think that you need a stabilization in the uh, cord cutting environment, uh, which might be on the fringes of happening uh, because of the, how the pricing of streaming services have increased so much that if you put them all together, uh, the, the, it's not such an obvious uh, decision for someone who still is a pay TV subscriber to be cutting the cord. So you need stabilization in the linear uh, subscriber market. Uh, you also need uh, the media companies, the media owners of these uh, linear uh, properties, as well as the, you know, the, their add-ons with streaming. They need to get more into digital advertising. They're, they've mm. been moving in that direction, but that's only about 20 or so percent uh, of their total advertising. And that's really important 
important for all the data that that provides to uh, you know to ad buyers. Uh, and they, if the ad buyers have more data on their digital delivery of ads to the networks, that's greater pricing and that's greater revenue for these media owners. That's a great point.